Greetings everyone and welcome to an absolutely marvelous day for February the 14th, Valentine's Day. Marvelous in that I'm sitting out here in upper 40 degree weather, sun is shining, it's a little breezy and keeping it a little cool, but this is awesome, this is unbelievable. Also watching all of our chickens munching away on some treats and... The reason why they're munching away on their treats down there is they were all at my feet just a minute ago and hey that wasn't working out too well so here we are uh, tasty tuesday looking at our passage for this coming sunday which is the sunday of the transfiguration of christ you remember that's when jesus went up on the mountain with uh, peter james and john and was his whole appearance was changed before them and he had two of his pals show up with him his pals me and Moses and Elijah but hey we're talking about the Older Testament reading for today or rather this coming Sunday which is from Exodus 24 verses 12 through 18 now this is one of those times that Moses went up on a mountain and it's it's a, a theophany it's a, a God revealing himself to the people that we find throughout the Old Testament and uh yeah this is it's kind of strange there's lots of lightning and fire and all oh, smoke this that and the other and that's the way god generally revealed himself there at mount sinai also called called mount horeb depends on which editors you're dealing with with which section of the older testament you have it going both ways but okay what's it's called mount sinai right now and uh this time Moses is up there he's up there for 40 days and 40 nights and he's going to come back with him a copy of the Ten Commandments engraved in stone you see Moses has already shared the Ten Commandments with the people verbally now he's going to come down off that mountain with them engraved in stone my question for you today is who was up there on that mountain doing the engraving Aha! Uh -huh. Are you ready? Was it God? Was it Moses? Or was it Aaron? Who actually engraved those stones? Do you have the correct answer? Well, I'm also going to ask the same question a second time because don't you recall that when Moses came down off the mountain and he saw the people worshiping the golden calf, what did he do with those Ten Commandments that were engraved in stone? He broke them. He just smashed them, symbolic of the people, breaking their covenant agreement with the people, uh, with God. So the second time that Moses went up and got the Ten Commandments engraved in stone, who engraved it then? Was it God? Was it Moses? Or was it Aaron? Aaron being Moses' older brother, his right-hand man, who helped lead the people out of Egypt. Okay. So, let's go back to the first time. Who engraved it? The answer is God. God did it with his own finger. He engraved those stones. Who engraved those stones the second time? You know, to get the new set after Moses broke the first set. The answer is Moses. <laughs> yeah, God made Moses do it this time. I think he said, look, bud, I already gave you a set of these. You do it this time. You can see how, how hard this is. Engraving Ten Commandments in stone. All right. But, but, but what's the whole point? The point of this passage from the 24th chapter of Exodus is to show that in the presence of God, something happens to people. People change. And sometimes that, that inner change that occurs to them is very visible on the outside. I really believe that's what's happening here because the people, uh, they notice the change in, in Moses. Now, I like it when Moses went up the second time and came down. That's in chapter 34 of exodus and i thought why wasn't that our reading for today because what it said then was the people couldn't bear to look at moses because his face was so bright and shiny that he had to put a veil on or it would blind them 
I thought, that sounds more like the transfiguration event. That's what happened to the disciples, those three disciples, when they were up on that mountain with Jesus and, and Moses and Elijah. I mean, the brilliant light that shone out of, out of Jesus and radiated from his face. Why didn't we use that Old Testament text? Well, the only thing I can say is we will be in two more years. Yeah, it's in the third year uh, of the transfiguration cycle the year of um luke so that hey that was last year so if you weren't paying attention you missed it so what else is going on here well this is right in the midst of a, a really cool thing that has happened moses has taken 70 of the elders of the people along with a couple other uh higher ranking people uh, amongst the Israelites and taking them up to the mountain and up on the mountain they all had a party <laughs> yeah they did it was a communal event in which they ate and they feasted with God yeah this is really a kind of a cool story that we don't often hear about but yet they all feasted with God and you're th saying, wait a minute, I remember that one Old Testament passage that says no one has ever seen God, and it even shows up in the New Testament too. Uh, well, wait a minute. Hey, that's really not so. In some way, in some fashion, God revealed himself to all these people, and they had a party. They feasted. They had a good time. And then Moses went further up the mountain by himself, to receive those Ten Commandments. And even then, 40 days and 40 nights he was up there. But even before that, it took six days of waiting, and then on the seventh day, he went up. I mean, it's it's just a, a crazy, crazy story that's full of really good nuances that we could get into, but there's just too many of them right now. So let's just get back to who engraved the stone. The first time around, it was God. Second time around, in chapter 34, it's going to be Moses himself. The moral of the story is, don't break anything God gives you because he's going to make you fix it. <laughs> okay, enjoy your beautiful day. Hopefully it's that way for you wherever you're at because out here right now, there is not one single cloud in the sky that I can see. And making a an appearance for me is... Uh, Roberta. Remember, she's our biblical scholar who kind of sets me on the right path every now and then. You see, there she is. Yeah, sitting right next to me. God's blessings be with you and have a wonderful Valentine's Day.